Things are told you invest in the program and things will look up. See. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't even know if I picked the pictures of my office. I think Mayo did that. Dave's gone, you think? They've been a lot of fun. I had a great time with the guys. Uh, they've, you know, they've obviously worked really hard in the off season to get themselves ready to practice. And uh, you know, first two days in helmets, you know, not a lot to see other than just. Seeing guys move around, and then today in pads, and finish with uh, some cool competition stuff. So, um, you know, anxious to watch the tape and see where we are. What does it say about Nash that he's out there already, like less than a week after participating at Nationals? For so on Monday, I told Tony White, I said, "Hey, I don't want Nash doing anything." And Tony didn't have a chance to get the message. Maybe to Terrence, I don't know whatever happened. And you know, he's wrestling on Thursday, and he's doing indie on, Indian one on ones on. Monday, and I walked over and like pulled him out, like, hey, just stand over here. And, but he's doing indie. Um, you know, we want him to have some time to rest his body. Uh, what he did was grueling. Um, but he also wants to be out there with his teammates. So uh, I can't say enough about Nash. Can't say enough about the professionalism of the wrestling program here, Coach Manning and, and uh, his entire staff. And I think it's been a really good thing for, for Nash uh, body wise. I think he feels good at that weight. And uh, we're going to experiment with him at that weight. Can you what see? Where is this weight? I don't know what it was today. I mean, he's, he's, we'd like him to be around 310 is kind of the hope. You know, he was at, you know, obviously he'd, he'd, he'd get in at 285, probably wrestle about 295. So I'm, I don't know today if he's at 305 or whatever, but we'd, we'd like him about 310. Can you see a difference with some of those receivers who, you know, they're, they're entering their second year? I know it's early on, but and how they're picking up from some of the veterans like Jamal and, and Isaiah Nair. Well, you know, Jamal and Isaiah are, are veterans, but they're rookies in our system, you know, and so. Um, I think all of them, the, there's, there's a lot being thrown at them. They're all having to learn. I think the thing you see with Jalen Lloyd, uh, you know, obviously Malachi's injured, but you can see his physical development. You know, he, he's chomping at the bit to, to practice, and he's doing some things in practice. But I think, you know, with Jalen, with Jaden, you know, they, they've done a great job with their bodies uh, physically to, to develop. And um, we've got good DBs, so the, the battles as we go throughout spring should be really good. How big is the spring for Emmett Johnson just to kind of – Pick up where he left off with some of the injuries and situations you got at running back right now. Yeah, Emmett's a guy that, um, when he was called on, made plays. He's one of our, mo our most athletic people. We keep track of everything. I mean, force plate jumps, heights, 10 yard dash, standing 10 yard dash. I mean, we keep track of everything. And in all his metrics, he's, you know, in the upper percentages. So he's just a, an, an elite athlete. And um, I think for him, it's just about continuing to get reps, to continuing to get comfortable. Um, but he proved last year that he, he's, he's, a, he's a man who, when given the opportunity, can, can make yards and can make big plays. You think about the run he made to end that, whether Northwestern or Purdue, I forget, I'm sorry, Purdue, I think, uh, the run he made to set up the win against uh, Maryland, which unfortunately didn't end up being a win. So he's made those big runs. Um, he's bigger, he's faster, he's stronger. Big spring for him. What did you see out of um, both Dylan Rayola and Daniel Kalen? And then how is Heinrich Harvick's development uh, progressed in the offseason? Well, I think, you know, um, um, Dylan and Daniel have, have done a great job of preparing within this offense. I think um, uh, they know what to do. They know where to go with the football. Um, they're on time. They're savvy. They're smart. Uh, so I, I've been really, really pleased. I mean, you can see uh, what a bright future they both have. And, uh, you know, Heinrich has done a great job of, of mastering, you know, kind of, you know, you go through last year, right? You're building for one guy, you kind of move into another, you know, now year two, we know who we are, we know what we have, we know the guys, bring Glenn back into the fold along with us. So I think um, we've been really able to kind of, at least in the passing game, identify, hey, here's what we want to do. And you can see Heinrich being very comfortable with those things. Are those true? Is that true? What, what you define as equal? Like who got the first snap or anything like that? No, I mean, if we went out the first day, the guy who took the first rep was Heinrich. I, you know, I, pretty much at every position, it's either the most seniorest guy or the guy who had the best off season, you know, with two freshmen. I mean, I don't know if I would ever put a freshman ahead of a guy who started for us at any position. So, um, but uh, as we go, the unique thing about us, I mean, if you guys didn't see the end of practice, we literally had three different fields of team drills going on at once. Everybody gets reps. Um, and we try to make them equal reps so that we can evaluate, 
you throwing this play, this throwing, this guy throwing that play. And as opposed to maybe sometimes in years past where I've, I'm usually very like, just develop, worry about yourself. And I, I do believe in this. Um, with our with our receivers, young receivers, with all those positions, I'm kind of like, hey, whoever has the best day, like, give them, them more reps tomorrow. Like, everybody wants constant feedback. So in, instead of me trying to scream for the old days, I'm like, all right, you want constant feedback? If you have five MAs, you're not going to get as many reps if you, if you know what you're doing. And so trying to encourage guys, you know, sometimes our guys, you know, even my own kids, they, they might average six, seven hours a day of screen time. They're not, I'm not getting six, seven hours a day of studying tape. If I did, we'd, you know, we'd be pretty good. So trying to encourage guys to really study tape on their own, know what they're doing. Because the players who know what they're doing play well. And um, that, that's why our two young quarterbacks are playing so well, because they've really worked at it. It's a realistic place to expect those freshman quarterbacks to be at at the end of spring, considering that it is just 15 practices. I'm expecting them both to be ready to start. We have three quarterbacks. I need three quarterbacks on scholarship. I need three quarterbacks who can start. Um, so high expectations. That doesn't mean they will start. Um, I probably won't even worry about who the actual guy is until that's. As I've always kind of gone with who's that's illuminated to us. You know, sometimes you start to give Sam the reps as a starting quarterback. You know, Sean starts to really elevate his game now. You know, so. But we need to be in a position where we feel like those guys can start um, at the end of spring uh, and, and move the team. And that's why. That's why we're doing the three fields and all the things that we're doing. We're we are not dipping our toe in. And we normally have it in year two, right? Like year one, you're trying to, they've never even heard this verbiage, you know, so you're trying to teach things very slowly to everybody. It's year two. Uh, the best thing you have in year two, uh, Mitch, is that like other players can teach, hey, this is what that means. And so you have, you, you, have, um, you have that. But both those guys came here to play. And again, it's a marathon, not a sprint for young players. You know, it's not about where you are today. It's where you are three, four years from now that determines your future. But we are accelerating the pace for all of our young players because just like, you know, we need those guys ready to play, we need some of those young receivers ready to play. And so we're, we're uh, as a coaching staff, taking that personally. Could you explain? I'm sorry, guys. Could, could you explain the three field thing? Did you do that last year? No, no. We, um, you know, we do a lot of competitive things. So we just, um, I think we're going to put a video out about it at some point. We're just, we're just trying some new things to make it competitive and fun. Um, so, we, you know, we put together three – three team teams, like literally teams. Like we have an offense and defense called the Bug Eaters. We have an offense and a defense called the Old Gold Knights. We have an offense and a defense called what? The uh, Rattlesnake Boys. And um, they each have their own song. The injured guys are like the GMs. They have coaches. And they're and like today was a third down derby. They're competing against each other. What we found with our guys is I was making fun of them out there. Like, oh, if I told you you had 36 reps of third down, guys would be like, oh, my legs. I say, hey, guys, we're going to compete. And they're like, run it back, do it again. Like, these guys love competition. They grew up in an era of, you know, playing Madden and playing Mario Kart. And they just love to compete. So um, I think what it does for us is it, it, makes, it makes different players have to go against different people. It's not all we're doing, but it's one part of what we're doing. It's giving all three quarterbacks a chance to really captain their own team and move your team. And um, we have a lot of unique things to it, all different types of situational things. But just trying to really buy into what our kids do, our, our young men do well. They, they love to compete, so we're trying to make it into a spring league. We made our own logo, our own deal. So uh, we're trying to be ahead of the curve. You saw the, you saw the NFL adopted the uh, the kickoff. Remember we did that last year in the spring game? So, like, we're, we're always – we're innovators over here. Now, that'll go tr tr viral and people will be hating me on Twitter. But uh, we're just trying to – we're just trying to do something to make it fun. You know, I think, like I said, um, I hate playing golf. But the minute you say, hey, let's, let's play a game, I become a different person. You know, like, hey, let's – you know, never for money, of course, but like, hey, let's play skins or something. I'm all of a sudden, I'm a different person. And that's the way our players are, right? They, they, lo they love to compete. And so we did it. And – Almost got a little too competitive at times. So it's been really fun. It was fun for the first day. We'll see how it continues if we, if we have enough bodies to continue it. Coach, uh, Stephon Thompson, Syracuse transfer. How have you seen his transition from Syracuse to here, and, and what have you seen early on from him? Well, Stephon's, Stephon's had a difficult transition. Um, um, he didn't come in in the best of shape. Hadn't really done our off-season program before. It's all very new to him, and it's been a struggle. Stephon's a wonderful young man, so he's worked hard to catch up physically. His body looks significantly better. You can see in the last two weeks, 
you know, his best things that he does are on the football field. But, you know, I brought him here to help him accelerate his pro career. And so uh, we're, we're going to push him. You can tell even by me answering it that, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing him because the thing that I'm, you know, the thing that I just want to get across to our guys is you don't get, there's not a lot of second chances in the NFL. And so you don't, you don't get to show up and be out of shape and think you're going to get a second chance. You don't get to, so trying to get our guys to really raise their level of expectation. Um, Stefan can help us. He's really a smart player. He knows the defense. He's got a lot of savvy. Uh, he's going he's gonna to have to just continue what he's been doing of just buying into how, how big, fast, explosive can I get. And he has to be in great shape. Similar, similar um, answer about Micah Mazuka in, in February. How have you seen, has there been any change? And what, what have you seen from him in the first? Yeah, Mike, Micah, like, Micah loves being on the football field. Okay, so you get Mike on the football field and like, you know, I, I, he was, he loves to be out there. Um, you know, I think Mike and I, you know, I think, I think the thing that I hopefully I've done a good job of articulating to him is that we have like, when these guys come here for one year, we, because we have, you know, a lot of guys on our staff with NFL ties, we're able to get the reports that people wrote on them. And so we don't go to all the good things. We go to the things that they're saying, hey, what's the question mark? You know, is it route running? Is it speed? Is it attention to detail? Is it body composite? What is it? And then let's devise a plan to help you fix those things going into this year. The NFL is the greatest job as a player. You know, you, you get paid based upon what you did in college, right? Like, you know, like if, if you walked into a McDonald's, like I have, I've probably said this before, but like one cash register makes minimum wage. The other one doesn't make 500 bucks an hour. But in the NFL, this guard makes league minimum. This one's making 24 million. And so um, trying to get guys to understand, hey, let's find out what the issues are. Let's fix them now. So when all the scouts come in, they have their questions. We can check boxes. So with Micah, you know, I've tried to say to him, like I'm saying to Stefan, hey, we got six months to do what should someone should have done in four or five years, you know, and not saying that people didn't do it before, but let's fix these questions. I have six months to be your coach. And I think we're in a really good place. You know, Mike and I have known each other for a long time. We're not afraid to, we're not afraid to, you know, lock, lock, uh, you know, lock horns and battle a little bit here and there. But when it comes to getting on the football field, the guy likes to play football and he's physical. So um, we're going to just, you know, keep moving him right along. Um, I consider him family. I've known him since he was young. He's from Philly. Anybody from Philly, you know, that I consider that, you know, my hometown. So um, we'll get him there, and he's come a long way. I know how excited you were about uh, Deshaun Singleton. Um, how has he come back um, from that injury? And also Brody uh, Tagaloa, how's he doing? Yeah, they're both – neither one of them are practicing. They're both um, – you know, Deshaun had come back from that injury, suffered against Michigan on the first play, and then, um, you know, tried to practice, and it was just not ready, and it's, it's still to this day not ready. So uh, the prognosis is good. You know, he's out there, you know, but he's, he's not going to practice at all this spring. Brody, I don't, I don't doubt, I don't think we'll practice at all this spring, but they're both trending on being in position to be really good. Um, I believe that Deshaun should get last year's year back uh, as a red shirt. You know, it's a unique deal because he played, he played one play in the fifth game. That game was against Michigan. Um, I feel like that, that one play shouldn't count and that he should get a red shirt year and have two years left. And I, uh, We've written an appeal. Um, my hope is that that appeal will be granted and he'll have two years. He might not need two years. He might be a pro after this year, but I'd like to at least give him that. But he is trending in the right direction. No one, no one works harder than Deshaun, and uh, Brody's done the same thing. Is this the most newcomers you've had in a spring? Uh, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Other than, you know, taking new jobs, you know, and walking in. I took, walked into Temple. I kind of knew the guys, but not really because I'd been there the year before. I walked into Baylor. I didn't know anybody. They didn't know me. Um, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of newcomers here, kind of a, you know, kind of a transition. And there's a lot of ki guys who were freshmen last year, but this was their first offseason. So, you know, Malachi and Jalen and those guys played, but they haven't done a spring ball yet. They haven't done – so um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, explaining what's expected. We're really blessed that we have Giff and Tommy and Keese, you know, in that DB room. That we have, you know, um, that we have Johnny Bullock and Buddha in the linebacker room, MJ Chief, um, Ty Robinson, Nash. You know, we have Jamari. We have a lot of older guys on defense. 
bringing back, you know, Ben Hart and um, uh, Ben Scott, you know, uh, that's that group, you know, was really solid with those guys. Heinrichs obviously played a lot. Fedoni, Borkature, Lyndon Meyer, Vets running back. You know, even your young guys, Emma Johnson started here. And uh, the receiver room is kind of the lone, the lone wolf, right? Some guys have played. And Alex Bullock's done a really nice job. And we have some guys, Roman Mangini. You know, we give out black shirts for off-season stuff, different kind of black shirt, not the black shirt, but just black jerseys to denote different colors. And uh, Roman Mangini gets one every time. And you know, we were trying to find a role for him on this team because he's so tough and so quick. And he's a great teammate in the receiver room. Elliot Brown's a great teammate in the receiver room, even though he's injured. So we have a lot of guys who add to the culture, which makes culture. You know, everyone asks me about culture. I'm, I'm not the culture. Those guys are the culture. And so that they've brought the newcomers along really quickly. You know, some, as I said, some of the, the portal guys, it's just different. It's so different. You know, it's like, wait a minute, coach. I was just at a school that won a ton of games and we did this, but they're coming along great. Last week about having a ton of talent on this roster and, you know, you want a ton of competition coming into spring. Is there a position group or position groups that you're excited to see compete against one another? I think it's everywhere. I mean, I really do. I mean, I'm, I'm watching on the O-line, you know, I mean, you have, you have guys like Lutowski who's been chomping at the bit to, you know, he's, he's started games, but the start, 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 right? You have, you know, you bring Mazuka in, right? You've got, um, you've got Justin, who's, who's been, a, been a guy who started for us. Then you move Ruquan Buckley over there, and here's this guy who's, Ruquan's one of those guys on the team that whatever room he's in is a better room. He's, he's one of those fundamental leaders um, that brings, raises the standard of everyone in the room. When he speaks, everyone listens. When he speaks, I listen. And so he's a natural athlete. So I think you do all that, plus the newcomers on the O-line, you're excited, you know. But it's the same everywhere. It's the same on the D-line. Um, uh, you know, so I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of taking a very much an approach of just not sitting back in a passive way. Just coach everybody and watch. And I think we all saw last year guys that, like, you know, started on the scout team by the end of the year were playing for us. It's the Big Ten. You know, it's going to be grueling. This is a double bye week year. This is an early start to training camp. You know, we start training camp, I believe, in July, not even August this year. So this is a long, grueling, so you need a lot of guys. And so um, that's why, you know, we, we made the decisions we made last year, redshirting some guys so that they would be in their freshman year yet have some experience. I think all those things you hope start to pay off, you know, whether it's James Williams or um, Jaden Doss or the, the tough decisions we had to make last year. Last year. Coach. Guardian caps uh, today at practice. Just what do you like about those and how can they help you out? Yeah, you know, um, I, 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 I just try to base everything off science. You know, every year I ask our people here. You know, I asked the first year when I got here, because in the NFL they had mandated in preseason the guardian cap. I got here last year. You know, I asked our doctors, our neuros, uh, neuro, uh, neuros, neurologists. <laughs> Jeez, I was about to say neuro. Psychologist, I don't know. No, no, you get what I'm saying. Um, I ask everybody, like, hey, what's the research? You know, I think uh, coming out of last year, there was, you know, because there was always been a lot of questions, like, you know, what's the efficacy of this? Um, coming out of year uh, year one or year two in the NFL, the research showed that it was working, so we went right to it. So the greatest gift we can give our guys is health. At the same time, we also have to practice and be physical. And I never think playing football is punishment. I never think it's a bad thing, you know in the age of opting out and all these different things. Like, I, I think uh, playing football is fun, and I want guys who love to play football. So we put the Guardian caps on. You can see, you know, we, we bought – thankfully, we bought red and white so we could – you know, we don't have the quarterbacks thrown to the same helmet that's on defense and on offense. So Jay Terry did a great job of that small detail. Um, so hopefully it helps our guys keep them healthier. Coach, um, are these guys more college-ready, Dylan, Daniel, than they maybe quarterbacks 10, 15 years? I mean, you're throwing a lot at them. They should be seniors in high school at this point. How, how have they progressed and how have they soaked it all in? Yeah, I think, well, I think both guys come from, you know, uh, great programs. You know, obviously Dylan played a couple places, but, you know, you don't, you're not going to find a finer high school program than Buford. And then you, you look at the offense at Bellevue West. You know, Coach Hoffman does a, a fantastic job. I mean, the RPOs, the sites, everything's built in. So, um, you know, now these guys play seven on seven. I think the biggest thing you're looking for in high school quarterbacks is you don't want guys who are just seven on seven guys. You want guys who can make a play with the ball in their hand. You want guys who can take a hit. You want guys who can play the game of football. And um, uh, both these guys have it. So, um, you know, the quarterback position, um, you look at it in the NFL, 
how challenging it is to, to, to predict who's going to be able to do all those things. That's why I think it's so important for us when we get here to put them in real, real football situations. But both guys, tremendous competitors, tremendous brains, will to win, will to succeed, come from great families, and um, obviously came from really good high school programs. I think that's a, that's a key. You know, when you, when you come, some, come from somewhere where the expectations are high, you come to a place where the expectations are high, it doesn't feel that much different because you've always been around a place with high expectations. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.